The best NBA player from every decade ranked. From the 1940s all the way through to the 2010s, you're not only going to find out each era's greatest talent, but you'll see who's got the best chance at being the king of the upcoming decade. Before continuing, over three quarters of my audience isn't subscribed, so please subscribe. Also, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. Number eight, the 1940s with Joe Folks. Following the inaugural season in 1946, everyone was shooting like a little kid using the granny shot. Folks invented the one-handed shot, becoming not only basketball's first superstar, but one of the most influential players of all time. In a league that looked nothing like the game we've gotten used to, Jumpin' Joe didn't know it at the time, but he would revolutionize the way NBA players would take jumpers for the next seven decades. In 1949, Falks recorded 63 points in a single game, about as much as an entire team produced in the era before the 24 second shot clock. You could argue George Mikan is the most talented player of the 40s, but since Folks came just before Mikan and invented the way players shoot to this day, he had to represent the 40s. Number seven, the 1950s with Bill Russell. Making his name synonymous with winning, Russell won everything at every level of basketball. In high school, he led his team to two state championships in California. At the University of San Francisco, he tacked on two NCAA titles and a 55-game college win streak. Next, he won an Olympic gold medal. He followed that up with 11 championships in 13 seasons in the NBA, including eight consecutive titles during the 1960s. I chose a different player for the 60s, but Russell's debatably the best player of that era as well. He led the league in rebounding five times and minutes per game once. He ranks number one in NBA history by a significant amount in defensive win shares, Tim Duncan's a distant second. He's second in total rebounds, rebounds per game, and minutes per game for his career. Number six, the 1970s with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Based on his production and resume, you could argue Kareem Abdul-Jabbar should be ranked higher. He's one of the 10 best players in NBA history, but he doesn't get talked about as much as the other big names. After Kareem's first season, the Bucks traded for all-star Oscar Robertson. The team improved to a league-best 66 wins, as Abdul-Jabbar won the MVP after averaging 31.7 points per game. The Bucks would dominate in the playoffs, similarly to how they dominated this season, but in the 1970s, they only lost twice en route to the franchise's first title. Abdul-Jabbar was also named Finals MVP. Jabbar was traded to the Lakers in 1975, where he'd helped Magic Johnson win five titles in the most dominant decade of Lakers basketball, the 1980s. But by the end of his career, Kareem had racked up six league MVPs, 15 All-NBA selections, and six rings. Number five, the 1980s with Magic Johnson. The most innovative playmaker in the open court that we've still ever seen to this day, Magic's six foot eight frame and ball handling ability blazed a path for many point forwards who'd follow in his footsteps. Larry Bird may have won Rookie of the Year in 1980, but Magic Johnson won when it mattered most. After averaging 18 points, 7.7 boards, and 7.3 dimes, the Lakers point guard was named a starter in the NBA All-Star Game and earned NBA All-Rookie honors. More importantly, he made it to the NBA Finals, where Bird was nowhere to be found. In Game 6, the Lakers were without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was out with a sprained ankle. Johnson was plugged in at the starting center and flexed his versatility. In one of the most clutch performances ever, Magic racked up 42 points, 15 boards, and 7 dimes while playing center, point guard, and forward. Fueled by that performance, Magic won Finals MVP and showed that even though he wasn't Rookie of the Year, he was a force to be reckoned with. That performance was only a preview of what Magic would ultimately achieve within the decade. As LA's most valuable player, Johnson went on to win four more championships. Number four, the 1960s with Wilt Chamberlain. Known as the player who dropped an NBA record 100 points, while Chamberlain only won two titles, he's still one of the greatest players ever. In 1972, Wilt helped win the Lakers their first championship in LA, but the most dominant stretch of his career by far came in Philadelphia. 
quickly establishing himself as the greatest big man anyone had seen up to that point, Chamberlain averaged at least 30 points and 20 rebounds for the first eight years of his career, which included a 50-point-per-game year. In his physical prime, Wilt was the strongest man who's ever graced the floor. He was able to bench press 550 pounds, 85 pounds more than Shaq could bench, who many regard as the most physically dominant player of the modern era. Chamberlain's other absurd physical feats include running the 100-yard dash in 10.9 seconds, throwing a shot put 56 feet, triple jumping 50 feet, and allegedly holding the highest vertical in NBA history at 48 inches. Number 3, the 2000s with Kobe Bryant. With a generationally ruthless work ethic, the Black Mamba fought his way up from being a role player in his early years eventually becoming the greatest player in franchise history. Along with being the Lakers' GOAT, Kobe's also the most accomplished and talented player of his era. Even though he was the second option, Kobe had a much bigger impact on the Lakers' three titles than many people give him credit for. He often had to pick up the slack for Shaquille O'Neal missing practice, something Shaq and Kobe would jostle over during their tenure as a duo. O'Neal's right up there with Tim Duncan for the best players of the decade, but his old running mate in the late great Kobe Bean easily takes the cake. For all 10 years of the decade, he was all NBA, an all defensive team eight years, matched by only Tim Duncan. Kobe was first team all defense seven years and first team all NBA seven years. Bryant also made an appearance in the finals six out of the 10 years of the decade. Nobody except Shaq comes close to that. Number two, the 2010s with LeBron James. At the beginning of the decade in July of 2010, James found himself heading into free agency without a championship. As he sat across from reporter Jim Gray at the Boys and Girls Club, preparing to make the biggest decision of his career, James was about to chart the course of the NBA for the next decade. On that night, when James announced he was leaving Cleveland to join forces with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami, he started the player empowerment era that we're into this day. The decision kickstarted a streak of nine NBA Finals appearances in 10 years, which gave James four championships, ending all of the early narratives and silencing doubters who questioned his incomplete resume and ability to deliver in the clutch. Haters still get on him for his 4-6 and six record in the Finals, but the fact that he dominated in the Eastern Conference for such a prolonged stretch gives LBJ the greatest legacy of his era, and debatably of all time. Number one, the 1990s with Michael Jordan. When deciding a player's greatness, we tend to overvalue a player's record in the finals and the amount of rings they have. While that does factor into the debate a decent amount, Jordan going six for six in the finals is far from the only reason why he ranks number one. When critics argue against Jordan as the best player ever, they point out that Chicago dominated a weak era where the NBA added six teams in a seven-year period from 88 to 95. Or people will say that Jordan had multiple Hall of Famers next to him, and even try to argue that defenses were weaker back then. What they failed to realize is that Jordan excelled in an era when hand-checking was legal, when squads like the Bad Boy Pistons could draw up physical defenses specifically designed to pummel the opponent's star. MJ played in the most physical era of basketball, but remains the NBA's all-time career leader in win shares per 48 minutes, player efficiency rating, and Raptor plus minus. As 538.com puts it, Jordan's reputation as the GOAT was not merely a media creation or the product of ring counting, it's withstood the tests of both time and science. Jordan wasn't only the master of mixing up drives to the basket and mid-range pull-ups, but he had genius-level defensive instincts. MJ won Defensive Player of the Year in 1988, he ranks number 18 all-time in steal percentage, and he made nine all-defensive teams. The most famous moment for Jordan was the pull-up and push-off on Byron Russell, which led to a championship-clinching jumper. Everyone forgets the reason Jordan even had the chance to make that happen in the first place, his defense. On the previous play, he shocked Karl Malone by rotating from out of nowhere to the weak side and stripping the ball for a steal. 
Of course, you can make the argument for multiple players, but the numbers tell us that Jordan was uniquely great, both in terms of what he did and how he did it. For the upcoming decade, right now I'd say the two most likely players to become the best of the current era are Giannis Adetokounmpo and Luka Doncic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, who should be ranked number one, and who could be the best in this upcoming era. Hope you have a great one, DFLO signing off.